I right, wanted to make a little video of the rainwater catchment system. So it starts with the metal roof up here. You can kind of see it's 28 degrees and snowing a little bit, but you can see it's dripping all the way along. And then that runs down the gutters. And you can see the downspout which goes into the salad bowl. So the salad bowl's got a hole cut in the middle uh, with this, I think it's four inch PVC with um, slits cut in it. And you can kind of hear the water dripping in to the cistern. So those salad bowls, the lid for the cistern gets cut out and that salad bowl just drops right in. Um, usually put some rocks or something in the salad bowl uh, that filters out uh, the worst of the sediment. So you can get a better look on this one. That's actually a burn mark on the PVC there. Um, these salad bowls with the sun hitting it, this will be the north side of it and the reflection of the salad bowl, it starts to burn the PVC pipe. So filling it with more rocks will also help prevent that from happening. So yeah, even below freezing, we're making a little bit of water and it's just slowly dripping down into the cistern. All right, so coming inside, you can see we're in the mechanical room. Here's the water organization module. And I'll just kind of walk through that so these two lines coming right here, those are coming in through the tire wall from those cisterns that we were just looking at. Um, you can see one of the cisterns here, or one of the lines coming in has a T, and that T is off and goes over to this valve. Um, this valve goes up to the viewing tube, and I'll put in a little clip of me opening that valve so we can see change in the water level. So we can open up the valve and you see the water level change. So opening that valve just shows you what your water's done since the last time you opened it. It might go up, means you've made water, it might go down, means you've lost water. So in that case, we made some water. We talked about these two lines coming in. One of them had the T over to the viewing tube. And then from there, you've got two valves. These valves are there so you can isolate between the two tanks or you can shut them both off. Um, you might need to drain one tank to service it and you can shut one tank off and have the other one still running so you have water in the house. Um, moving on from there, it comes down to another T, which drops down to this valve. What this valve is for is so you can drain whatever cistern, both of them or whatever, however you have these valves set up. So if you need to drain it, that's how you do it right there. And then moving over, we've got another valve. Uh, this one will shut off the whole water organization module. So the water will flow through because it's open and it'll go into this filter right here. This is just a pre-filter for the pump um, just to get any sediment, make sure nothing's gonna go through and damage the pump. Um, from there, it can go up through here. Um, that takes us over to the pressure switch. So this is actually the pressure switch. This is the pressure gauge. Uh, what the pressure switch does is it controls the pump. So this is a 3050 pressure switch. So you can see we're at 50 PSI. So it's fully pressurized. So what'll happen is if you open a faucet or something, the water will drain out until it hits 30 PSI. And then the pressure switch will let the pump know it's time to kick on. We need water pressure. So this controls this pump. So moving on, this comes to our first filter after the pump. 
Um, this is a 500 mesh filter, a spin down filter. From there it moves on down and this goes to two different places. There's hot and cold. So this one goes to the Renai hot water heater, which is up there. It's a propane on demand heater. And then this line drops to all the cold lines in that. So this cold line drops down and you can see it comes to a T over to the right. That goes to all the cold faucets and shower and everything in the house. Over to the left, we've got a valve. And then beyond that valve, that goes up the wall there and into the pressure tank. So how the pressure tank works, it's just pretty much a tank with a bladder inside. Um, when the pressure is building from the pump down there, that bladder expands. Um, once it hits the full 50 PSI, the pump will shut off. And then if you open up a faucet or a shower or anything um, in the house, the bladder will push the water out until it drops to that 30 PSI or lower, and then the pump will kick on. So the pressure tank's there just kind of as a buffer so the pump's not constantly running when the faucet's open. So the bigger your pressure tank, the more time you have, I guess, um, to run the water before the pump kicks on. Just wanted to add a few more things about the electrical side of the WOM. So this pump here, this is a uh, 24 volt pump, DC. This switch right here, this will shut the pump off, just as the pressure switch will shut the pump off and also turn it on. So the pressure switch will control it um, based on the pressure in the system. And over here, this is a power supply. So most of this house runs on AC power, just normal what you'd have in any other house. What this power supply does is it drops the voltage down to the 24 volts. You can run um, a normal AC pump I think they are maybe a little more expensive. Um, these 24 volt pumps are also a little more expensive. I've seen people use 12 volt pumps. They're a little cheaper and easier to get. And you just need a different power supply or have a 12 volt system for your electrical in the house. All right, so we've talked about everything for most of the household water. Um, so up until this point, this is all your standard, what comes out of your shower and sinks, hot and cold. Beyond that, everything past that is dedicated for drinking water. So you don't wanna have drinking water coming out of your shower. There's, there's no point in dirtying up these filters. So this sediment filter cleans everything good enough for showers and sinks. And then over here, we've got a thousand mesh spin down filter. And then that goes in to this Dalton ceramic filter. So between these two filters, everything past that, that's good clean drinking water. So you'll have a drinking water faucet at all of your sinks in the house. So wanted to do a little video on the hot side. So from this hot side, that goes up, up here and up into the Brunei instant hot water heater. Um, from there, it comes out and there's a few different places it goes. Um, it'll go to all the plumbing, the washer, dryer, or just the washer, and sinks and shower. Um, and then there's another system going on. This system has never been used, but it got put in place. Um, it's, it goes down and into the floor in case you ever wanted radiant heat inside the floor. Again, I don't think this system has ever been used. It's not really needed. The building performs great without it. I also forgot to mention this valve here. Um, so what that'll do is it can you can bypass around the pump. Um, so if you needed a gravity feed through this system, um, you could turn that and just bypass over the pump. Um, another note, now that I'm looking at it, um, is these lines here. 
You can notice the lines going into the pump. They're not rigid, hard plumbing. They're flexible. Uh, the reason for that is the pump vibration. You don't want that going in and rattling all your plumbing loose. So having uh, flexible lines coming in and out of the pump help with that. So after the water has gone through the water organization module, it goes to your sinks and showers. So you'll have cold water, hot water, and then there's this one over here, and this is drinking water. So this is just normal, um, goes through those that first filter, um, I guess the first two filters, and then everything coming out of this um, goes through that thousand mesh filter and also the ceramic filters. So this is good to, good to drink. All right, coming out of the bathroom, this is the gray water drain. So this is coming from the sink in the bathroom and also the shower. So that'll come, you can kind of see right here, this is a Jandy valve. So this is three-way valve, it comes in from the bathroom and you can either have it running over to the gray water reception cell or if I turned this valve to the right over here, that would go straight to septic and bypass the gray water planter. Moving over, so this is the gray water reception cell. You can kind of see some of the grime and stuff from this bathroom sink and shower. So we've just got mesh on there and then some copper with some slits cut out of it to also stop anything debris or anything going in to the gray water planter. So in this house, there's three different cells for the gray water planter. So this is the reception cell. So all the water from the kitchen, or sorry, the bathroom comes in through there and it fills this cell up. Now you can kind of see over here, you can see the water level down there, this observation tube. And what this tube goes down to runs across over and there's another one kind of deep in the plants there and that would fill this cell up and then it'll flow over same thing under the concrete here and over to this cell now this is the biggest cell in the last planter so the water will flow gravity feed all the way down to the end over here. And then you see these two observation tubes as well as a filter right there. So these two observation tubes at the end of the gray water planter, um, they're a little bigger. And the reason for that is you'll drop a submersible pump down there. Um, there's actually two of them. One is for the gray water that goes to the toilet and one goes for the recirc. So the one in there will recirculate it back to that original planter cell over here and it'll go through the system again. This one here is for the gray water in the toilet. So that'll get pumped up through a filter. The reason the filter is covered is it's clear and you don't want anything to grow with the light hitting inside the filter housing. So from the submersible pump, that goes through that filter and over here to another pump. Um, this pump will pump the water over to the toilet. Um, again, this house mainly has AC power. So we've got another power supply that converts it to the 24 volts to run that pump. Okay, so we're in the bathroom now. And you can see there are two water lines coming out of the wall. So the one that's hooked up to the toilet right now, that's coming from that pump I was just showing you um, over by the gray water planter. So that is the gray water that's going into the toilet. The other line coming out that is fresh water. So that is coming straight from the wall. 
So if you don't want to take the water from the gray water planter, if you got a bunch of extra water, you can take straight from the fresh water line. So I just flushed the toilet, and as you can see, you can hear this pump, this submersible pump pumps it up to that other pump going through that filter. And then this pump is pumping away, sending water back to the toilet. I also mentioned that there was a second recirculation pump. And you can see that PEX line coming through. So that's where the water will come out from the end of the planter over there. It'll get pumped back over and go through the whole system again.